unless something massive changes and we in fact get the infrastructure reconciliation bill that we've been promised now, it seems like the uh, the fortunes of a number of different industries come, come through this period pretty well. The lobbying that they've done, the money that they've donated to a couple of key lawmakers who would stop the bill from including the things that people desperately want, sure seems like money well spent. And I wanna dive into one example of that. It has to do with the ability of the government to negotiate on drug prices. So pharmaceutical corporations and private health insurers spent $171 million lobbying through the first nine months of the year, the most of any industry. Big Pharma has 1,600 lobbyists, they outnumber Congress three to one. $171 million, not even on a full year, because it's an investment. They put in $171 million and they think they will make far more than that. Well, how are they gonna make that? I mean, if the debate is about negotiating for lower drug prices, where is that 171 million plus gonna come from? Well, presumably you're going to be paying more for your prescription drugs. So thank you, Pharma. Thank you to the the politicians that they donated to. We have um, a little bit more information about this. The industry's focus on drug pricing has increased dramatically in recent years as the issue becomes top of mind for voters. Voters really want negotiation. In 2012, lobbyists registered to work on the issue of drug prices 69 times for 20 clients. In 2021, it's already been nearly 1200 times for 242 different clients. So this has been a far bigger part of their focus. And it's led to money on advertising. It's led to uh, Kirsten Cinema has gotten $750,000. After previously being in favor of this sort of negotiation, she received close to a million dollars. And now she voted against it. She didn't want it in there anymore. So this is a great system that we've got, Francesca. A lot of speech, I mean money. I mean, I don't use the word evil uh, very much, but this is evil. Like the amount of money that is in our political system from corporations that are vested in us dying, overpaying, going bankrupt to get our meds, splitting our meds, not being able to take them when we need them um, is, is pure evil. Like that's just, there's no other way to say it. There is no reason that people should be paying that much for life saving medication that they need every day. You don't care about the American people. You don't care if we live or die. You care about your bottom line and that's it. It's evil from corporations. It's evil from the politicians that take meetings with them. There is no reason. Even some Republicans, although they don't openly admit it, they know that they want to on a local level negotiate with drug companies because even paying for their state employees health expenses when it comes to medication is incredibly exorbitant. Republicans are all about saving money. Democrats supposedly all about saving money. Oh, How are we gonna pay for the Build Back Better plan? We need a CBO score, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I can't vote for it until I know it's paid for. MFers look at how you could save money right now, but you don't, you won't. And so I, I guess I'm just like, I am disgusted by this. They're, they're, what, what do you do? And the last thing I'll say on this, None of these lobbyists, they're the consortiums, the groups that like I've tried, they don't go on the record with media. That's it. They never, yeah. they never give a statement. They never talk to the media. They never respond for comment. They just work in the shadows and they get their way. Yeah, hundred percent. Uh, they get their way. You don't because the American people are not ambiguous on this. Eighty-three percent want the federal government to reduce the cost of medications, which we now pay two to four times more for than people in other countries for the exact same medication. Um, you know, it's uh, I'm looking at a poll right now. Uh, it is seventy-six uh, percent Republican support for allowing the federal government to negotiate on drug prices. It is ninety-two uh, percent for Democrats. So you might think ninety-two percent of Democrats, Democrats control the House, the Senate, and the presidency. Obviously, they're going to do it. What do you think, this is a democracy? No, they, they briefly took out the entire negotiating thing. Eventually there was a compromise. People like Bernie Sanders and others were able to finally add in negotiation on a handful of specific drugs, thankfully including capping insulin costs. But that's it, just because virtually every American wants this. Every American apparently didn't donate $171 million to influence the outcome. And yes. so the industry that did, one as it always does.
Yeah, and lastly, you know, you can be pro vaccine and anti big pharma, and I think a lot of progressives are, are exactly that. And if Democrats don't show up and say that they don't uh, agree that big pharma should be running the show, then we are in a whole world of trouble because the anti vaxxers are using that big pharma line uh, to make us all less safe. Here's the thing, man you negotiate with them, you help them develop these life saving vaccines, then leverage it, then use it for something. What is the point of giving all that money if then you're just gonna <laughs> you're just gonna allow them to continue to run roughshod and overcharge us? I agree. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.